Good. Good. Intro. Good. It's intro time. Shut, sh everyone shut up. It's not a financial motive that these people have. It's a narcissism. It's a inflated ego. It is, it's an attempt at greed while failing spectacularly. But it's, it's ultimately, I think, a hatred towards these, this old world of r amazing writing and storytelling. You know, Gladiator 2 is another example of this. It's, uh, it was obviously not a, a good faith retelling of the original. I think, I don't know what Ridley Scott was even trying with that. I don't know what he was I trying mean, to do. It's his work. He's, he's, so he's, he's shitting the bed for over a decade now. Right. It's it's his work. So I don't have I don't have a hill a moral high ground on the hill to die on with Gladiator two specifically. But it's it's also sequels that don't need to exist. Like you're just ruining the legacy. Bad. So in 2025, my main focus in 2025, at least as of right now, is going to be calling out these studios who are doing these bad faith adaptations and making sure that they are on notice that we see them. We see what they're doing. We're going to continue to call it out and we're going to continue to criticize it. And you can fix the issue by either making a good faith adaptation of the story, or if you want to tell your own story, do it with something else. That's my, that's my main focus going into 2025. That's my main issue. So I guess if either of you guys want to talk about your main concerns with media, just take it away. Pretty similar to yours, like established lore matters. And that's that covers everything from race swapping to just changing the story in general. You keep bringing up Lord of the Rings. There's no need to expand on anything because <laughs> Tolkien created an entire universe like just pick any one of the thousands upon thousands of stories that he has just tell that story that'd be awesome i want to comment real quick on the lord of the rings thing um if people can there's a a video on youtube it's about a three minute video it's um it might be a little longer it's uh tolkien was reading from the return of the king the uh ride of the rohirrim he was reading a chapter from that uh, over the radio and you have the audio recording of him reading it from over or reading it over the radio and in the backdrop on the video you have the actual scene and of of that being acted out in the return of the king film jk or not jk rowling uh peter jackson was in was attempting to make such a lore, like a good faith adaptation that he mandated that people in the front of that shot in the front of that scene must have read that that chapter and must have read the return of the king and the lord of the rings they must have known the significance of that moment in that in the universe in order to participate and be in the front line of that shot that's how important yeah, it was but, you know what else peter jackson did they yeah. filmed a bunch of fight scenes with uh arwen during helm's deep <laughs> like it was really close to being in the movie yeah i mean it's it definitely was a it, i mean I don't remember from the original Lord of the Rings book what Arwen was doing in in Helm's Deep. So I think the choice between making her a powerful warrior that's in Helm's Deep versus making her a cowering woman in the caves with everyone else, I think they made the right choice in the final edit of no, that. No, no, no. But Wait, Arwen, that's, the elf. That's Arwen. Arwen. Yeah, the Arwen. yeah uh, okay, sorry. Yeah. I'm, that's what I meant, but I, 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 I get it. Good catch. Um, but yeah, Arwen... Uh, yeah, Arwen should have been down in the cave. That was better for her no, character. We're still talking about Eowyn. Eowyn is the uh, blonde. Blonde cave. Yeah. Not okay. Arwen. Arwen. I'm not intentionally fucking this up, guys. I I apologize. <laughs> so Eowyn is down in the caves. Yeah, I'm talking about Arwen. Oh, they filmed what? Arwen, which was not in the books, fighting the El and So the they didn't want to do that. Is um, well, didn't make so Eowyn would be like the strong female character. Arwen's the love interest, right? For Aragorn, yeah. Why she wouldn't be in Helm's Deep in the first place? Yeah, yeah. correct. I don't think there That's were. That's what I'm saying. Like he does some faithful stuff, but then there was almost a point where we would have had girl boss elf fighting in Helm's Deep, right? Mm -hmm. So and it was taken out. Yeah, for good reason. Yeah, it, that's yeah. that's a better call. But I mean, like, but it was close. I, I well, I'm glad we didn't get that. I mean, the 
the other uh like the uh the scour the scouring of the shire was also a scene we didn't get which i make i understand that makes sense the scouring of the shire would have been very difficult to actually do and i think saruman living until the end of the story would have been a bad way to finish it so i, I mean yeah. i think it's properly told in the books but i understand for film that choice and i don't yeah, think it was made out of it you just had an ending already and like a cathartic ending yeah and then you'd have to go back and have fucking raping and pillaging in the shire <laughs> exactly it would be yeah. yeah it would be hard to it'd be hard to do that with with film so i get it plus the 20 other different endings so. but yeah the um lord of the rings is definitely one of the ones that i think is the most egregious offense i think for me it, i probably rank order it like lord of the rings with rings of power um i think war of the rohirrim is probably going to be the same case um where hera has no business being a story uh but we'll see well, hera doesn't even have a name exactly <laughs> she's the nameless daughter nameless daughter she has no business having a story it shouldn't be a tale of two cities where it's like uh uh, I might actually have a tale. I think it's Romeo and Juliet is what I meant to say, but the, where you know fighting factions and there's a love interest between the the prince and princesses of those factions. Um, I think that's kind of I could appreciate that you want to tell a classic story, um, but I think it's bad setting. What's well, more egregious though? It's the same writers that wrote uh, the screenplay for the Lord of the Rings movies. Yeah, it's Philip Boyens and uh, what's her face? Yeah. Uh, so What's your pick? Yeah. I think Lord of the Rings is the most egregious. Then I think Halo to me is one of the most egregious, and I might be I might be mix forgetting a bunch of others. There's obviously a plenty of examples, years and years of examples, and just looking across the internet will prove evident to that. It's that's the main thing. It's if you refuse to tell a lore accurate or a good faith story. You deserve to be called out on it. And if you want to say that our concern about that isn't reasonable or we are overreacting to the issue, then you're not someone who cares about lore accuracy, but that doesn't make us wrong. It means you don't care about this. It doesn't mean it's not worth caring about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Co Cody, I don't see you getting better anytime soon. I, I definitely don't want to monologue here. So, uh, Cody, do you have anything to to add? Do you have any Do you have any other concerns besides what me and Matt were saying? Not really. No. I mean, it's all a big wait and see game to see if the industry is gonna move in a particular direction. But I mean, it does take a few years. It takes yeah. even longer with gaming. But well, the gaming successes we've had in 2024. Let's just briefly touch on that. Black Myth, Wu Kong. Space Marines 2. Uh, was Helldivers last year or was it this summer? So like this summer. Okay, yeah. I, I, I get my timeline mixed up on that game specifically, but I would say besides the, the PlayStation debacle, that game was very popular and very well received. And I mean, it definitely stood out from the industry. Um, Dragon Ball Z, Sparking Zero, Black Ops 6. I mean, we've had a lot of successes in gaming. In television, we've had a lot of failures too. We've had a lot of failures, but they are failing harder and winning harder than historically. Like yeah. you are seeing bigger wins and more epic losses, rather than this kind of play out where, oh hey, you can find a gem in the in the rough of for a video game. On the TV side, you have major successes like Tulsa King, uh, Penguin, and other in other leading shows like that. For movies, we've had a couple of good movies this year. I think the biggest one that was a success was definitely Deadpool Wolverine. Um, but you've also seen Disney. So you've, Disney has recovered from Deadpool and Wolverine, Inside Out, and Moana, Inside Out 2 and Moana 2, most of the money I think they would have lost in recent failures, or at least a good chunk of the money they've lost in recent failures, if not all of it. So while I think my frustrations with Disney are well-founded, um the back and forth that they benefit from and 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 fail from uh they definitely make plenty of money to offset some of these losses they're obviously heavily invested into um we'll have to see if the stock prices continue to diminish but i i we the movie industry i think is going to be one that's a little bit more uh hard to categorize 
because you'll still see a lot of what you a lot of what we what we've been complaining about but i think they're going to do it to a smaller scale and then make the argument that hey you're still complaining about this we're we're not doing anything wrong we're we're only race swapping this one character rather than inserting all these gay sex scenes into it i mean we're they're definitely going to dial it back and then use that as a as an attack against the fandom saying you can't be satisfied by anything it's like well you just need to absolutely stop we're not I we're, am insatiable yeah. money talks money talks if we, and if we don't buy it then it's going to fail well people need to just and with your that. wallet yep yeah definitely our money has definitely talked this year i think we definitely shook up the industry with some of these wins and some of these major losses that they've suffered so hopefully 2025 turns a corner and i would like to see that happen i think um we have a couple of projects coming out here that we can all be excited about and got a lot of changes coming to the channel in, in upcoming months so look forward to that but unless you guys have anything to add i think we're going to wrap it up there all right that's it all right thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode we hope you guys enjoyed and if you did please consider subscribing to the channel it's free it's the best way to help us out and, and help us grow check out the merch store links at the top of the description in the video hope you guys like the uh like them please comment if you guys have any questions or if you guys want to see anything uh from the merch store get added um we are definitely going to be taking your guys's feedback and uh revisiting future versions of the store so any feedback you guys have will definitely be taken into consideration. Make sure to comment on all upcoming videos in the rest of the year. Your comments, if they are, if they receive a bunch of likes, we will put you in the running for the variety pack of excess energy drinks that we have promoted. So make sure that you guys comment on videos so that you have a chance to win that. Smash the like button, share the video out there. Make sure to tune in next Saturday for an additional episode of the third party podcast. Sunday Slackers tomorrow, so make sure to tune into that and weekly content coming out, or and we have additional content coming out throughout the week. Thank you guys for all of your support and all your love. We really appreciate having you guys. And don't forget, go tell your stories. Peace out.